adventures. What do you guys think of our new rig, huh? <laughs> Not too bad, huh? So you guys know that we were traveling around in our travel trailer, but we had since abandoned that and we were just kind of taking our truck around here in Colorado. But it's not like we could just pull over anywhere and sleep in that, right? So we decided to get ourselves another RV. We bought a new car! We got a new car, not just a car, a giant truck with a house attached to it. Just kidding, we didn't actually buy this, guys. We're just <laughs> renting it. Also, I think we have met our vehicle quota for an entire lifetime, so we can't buy yeah. anything yeah. else. Yeah, we've got like four of them, now five, including this. <laughs> but later on, we're gonna have to show you guys all the bells and whistles that this thing has. I mean, obviously, it is quite a capable vehicle. But if you've been following along, you know that our goal was to see as much of Colorado as humanly possible because we're thinking of maybe buying land or a house here at some point or something like that. But we want to get to know the state a little bit better, maybe fall in love with some little charming spots along the way. But but it is also winter. That means frozen roads, blizzards all over the place. Today, there's actually a blizzard coming. We're driving right into one. So that's why we figured we'd get a four x four camper. <laughs> yeah, nothing could stop us now. Bring it, winter. Bring it on, baby. Well, what are you doing out there? Come on, let's hit the road. <laughs> all right, let's go. Congestion on Interstate 70 West are causing a 45 minute delay. You are on the fastest route. Holy cow, you guys, we are driving into some uh, long, long delays on the highway. <laughs> yeah, we're not really sure if it's due to weather or there happened to be like three different wrecks. I don't know. Yeah, but I think uh, there is some pretty bad weather on the road. So, uh, but we have a capable vehicle, so we should be okay. Might have to stop and turn on the four wheel drive at some point though. We'll see. We're starting our journey today in Golden, Colorado, but the plan is to make about a four hour drive straight west to the town of Aspen, a town that we have heard of all of our lives, but yes. never been to. But like we mentioned, there is this big Arctic blast coming down and bringing a lot of snow and cold weather with it. We're not sure what the roads are gonna be like. We're just gonna go and see how far we get. The reason we are going so far today and trying to brave the storm is because there's a very special event happening out there, which I guess we'll tell you guys about in a little bit. I already know what it is, <laughs> but it's a bucket list item for us. Yeah, for We're gonna sure. We're going to keep it a secret, dang it. <laughs> but the snow is just starting to come down a little bit. It's getting a little nasty, but <laughs> we're going to make it, hopefully. This might be on the list for top most beautiful drives we've ever done. And because there's so much freaking traffic, we're just taking it nice and slow. The plus side is we get to take in all this incredible scenery. There's this elevated highway we're driving on that just weaves through the mountains here. It's incredible. What's really blown my mind is that humans built all this stuff. <laughs> There was a time where people literally just had to walk through this. And now we just sit in here, we got our tunes going and we just drive. <laughs> but man, these mountains are incredible. It all of a sudden got kind of deserty, but it's still covered in snow. It's a really cool look. just stopped to pick up some provisions, got back in the car and went to map to Aspen. And it's saying now five hours, which we should have only had two left. And it's saying because we have to go crazy up here instead of taking 70 right across, apparently 70 at some point is closed. Yeah. It just happened. Like maybe if we hadn't gotten off here, yeah. we could have been through. Yeah, so a two hour trip has turned into a five and a half hour trip and it wants us to go all the way around through a national forest. So we probably aren't gonna do that. <laughs> we're currently outside of Breckenridge. So we're just gonna try to make it to Vail. Yeah, and, and then just, reassess. <laughs> I guess. Might just be parking in a parking lot tonight. Hey, it is snowing, but there's still blue sky in some spots. I don't know. We're gonna get as far as we can. <laughs> Well, good morning, adventurers. Hello there. Good morning. Yeah. Not Woo. a bad spot to wake up to, huh? Not bad, Not bad at, all. at all. We had no idea what we were driving into last night. It was dark and snowy, and uh, yeah. this will do. That means we officially made it to Aspen. We did. And I guess it is time to tell you why we are here. We're at the freaking X Games, you guys. The X Games. They're in Aspen this year, and we have always wanted to go to the X Games, so we're going to go take a look for a day. It's going to yeah. be awesome. It's totally free to go, and full disclosure, 
we didn't know about this until yesterday, so yeah. we completely changed our road trip plans, but I'm not upset about it. Yeah, I was thinking of entering as well, you know, show off my snowboarding skills, right? Yeah, how you fall down a mountain. Is there a category for that yet? I think so, there should be. Falling with style? <laughs> I would win, win that one. But before we do that, we wanna give you guys a look around this awesome beast of a vehicle that we've been driving around. I mean, look at it. It's in its freaking element over here. How cool. We are right next to an airport, so these planes are literally like 100 feet above our heads. <laughs> This is our 2013 4x4 Bengal Tiger. <laughs> the that was like the, the wimpiest little rare ever. First thing you notice is this thing is sitting on top of four giant tires and the suspension is very heavy duty. So this thing is designed to pretty much go anywhere. It's built on top of a heavy duty extended cab F350. Instead of being a separate truck camper, this one is actually built into the chassis. So it's more like a class C camper. And what we really love about this particular one is this awesome blue color. We just thought that was super unique. Most of them out there are white or gray. It's about 22 feet long, which believe it or not is about the size of our F250. And it's got a decent amount of ground clearance for that uh, 4x4 off-roading that we're gonna hopefully maybe do later if we can find a good trail. Yeah. This thing has all the amenities you're gonna find on a classic RV. We've got the propane furnace right here, the water heater that's run on propane. This is for a 30 amp shore power connection. We've got the city water connection. And this is actually the propane tank that feeds everything. It's actually pretty decent capacity. We ran the heater all night and it only took about 10% away from it. Pretty good. It's very good because it was like three <laughs> degrees last night. Yeah, kept us nice and cozy though. Since this is a 2013, it has seen a lot of action over the years. It's got some light scuffs all over it, a couple little bits of damage, the little step bar here is kind of bent. There's also no stairs to get up in this. So if you got a bad hip, you might not be able to get in it. I think they broke off at some point. <laughs> they do give you a nice little step stool, but we yeah. haven't used it. We're kind of giving them a pass on all this stuff because it's a rugged 4x4 off-road vehicle. It's a little old and I, you know, that's just what happens. That's natural wear and tear for a vehicle like this, right? Do you want to give them a look inside? Oh, heck yeah. That's my specialty. You do the outside, <laughs> yeah. I'll do the inside. Well, welcome to the inside of our little off-roading rig. It might not win any awards for aesthetics, but it's actually not so bad. It's pretty bare bones because you're supposed to be out in nature, I think enjoying the nature, not the interior. But it's set up really well. It has a surprising amount of space in here. You can sing and dance and do whatever you need to do. And it's nice when this table's not here, you can actually move around each other, which is something you guys probably know we don't like about being in a van. Yes. You don't have room to pass each other. Now, the overhead clearance leaves something to be... Yeah, luckily, I am. it's just my exact <laughs> height, so I haven't bonked my head yet. And they put this nice soft material up here for when you inevitably do bonk your head. Yeah, there is a huge kitchen area. We were really surprised by this. They've really got a lot of amenities in here. They have a nice size fridge with a freezer. They even have a cutting board, which is pretty sweet. I kind of wish we had one of these in our trailers. Yeah, we could add it. I guess we could. It's got quite a bit of counter space, and I think it's kind of interesting how the sink is part of the counter, so everything can get wet, and there are no seams here to kind of degrade or get nasty or anything. It's nice, and it's easy for cleanup. There is no oven, but there is this nice propane stove top, and it works really well. We cooked on it last night. It's got a really nice fan, though. We were really impressed at how well that works. Yeah, that's important <laughs> to us because we don't want to die of like carbon monoxide or exactly. something. Exactly. It really sucked it all out. I think it's the best one we've ever encountered in a rig. Obviously, it has a handy little microwave and we do have an inverter to run it. We probably won't use this, but it's nice to have when you're in a pinch. There's also quite a bit of storage in here. They've stocked it for us, but they put these nice little mats in here. I think they're waterproof and they've cut out little areas for all of the important stuff to go in so it doesn't go flying around when you're inevitably driving on really bumpy roads. We might borrow that for Clementine. Might do that exact same thing. Yeah. Another feature we really love are all the windows. They just wrap all around it. So when you're sitting here chilling or cooking, you can see everything. Yeah, we opened up the shades to an incredible snow covered mountain view this morning. And how nice is this seating area? It's huge. We were like laying down watching movies last night. When this table's gone, this actually turns out into another almost double size bed. So you can have all your friends come along with you. Plus that means there is tons of storage underneath here, which is very handy and helpful. And up above there is much more cabinetry and we have stuffed all of our goodies up in here and there's still plenty of space left. And speaking of space, they even have a whole closet, which I have almost completely filled. But you have hanging space plus all the cabinets. You can stuff everything you want in here. 
And yes, they do have a full bathroom with a shower. You know, using the term full loosely, it's very tiny and I cannot actually stand up properly in here. <laughs> so this is one of those toilet shower combos. So basically everything in here is waterproof. They have this cheeky little shower head thing that you can use. We have not used the shower yet and I don't know if we will because we're just not a huge fan of showering in a tiny space with your toilet right here. That's why we have such a big bathroom in our RV. But it is nice that you can take a shower, a hot shower in a pinch. This is our favorite thing about this rig. It has a whole dedicated bedroom up here, baby. So you put out your little ladder there, you crawl up here and uh, go to sleep. <laughs> it was actually that. nice sleeping up there. Yeah, you guys know that we sleep in an overhead cab like this in our own RV, Clementine. So we're pretty used to this, but I can imagine if you get a little claustrophobic, you might not like it so much. Luckily, a lot of it is padded. So when I inevitably hit my head like 10 times this morning, it didn't hurt so bad. We do love that you have the wraparound window so you can open up the window in the morning and get the awesome view. One downside though is I was sleeping over here and it is a lot colder when you're against this window, you know, because it just isn't insulated. And you're as far away from the heater as humanly possible. Just means we got to snuggle, babe. <laughs> yeah, it just bundled up and it really wasn't that bad. I actually slept really good up here. One downside to this rig is that these are uh, not blackout shades. <laughs> so if there's any ambient light out there, it's coming in. But they do have some built-in overhead storage, which we like. So it gives you a place to put, you know, some water or your phone or whatever. No matter how you slice it, though, it is awkward getting down from here. I never know where to, whether to go front ways or back ways. <laughs> We're going back ways, baby. It'd be cool if there was some dedicated ladder or something to get up there, but instead they just have this little uh, clip on one. So when you're done with that, you just set it up there. So you'll find some of the control panel right over here. This is the same little tank monitor that we have in our rig. So we know it works really well. You can monitor, you know, your battery, fresh tank, your uh, propane, all that stuff. This tells you the charge status of your battery. This isn't super sophisticated, so it doesn't really tell you your exact capacity. You kind of have to go based on the voltage. So that's kind of a downside, but it does work. And then this is the same uh, heater that we have. So you just put this up and then it turns on. There you go. And it works really friggin' well. Kept us alive anyway. <laughs> One little thing I don't really like is that they have these two vents, but they're right next to each other. It would have been a lot nicer if they had kind of spread them out to kind of get more even heat in here. And there's a switch down here that I really, really want to touch, but something tells me that's a bad idea. <laughs> Why, hello there. <laughs> so there's even more controls down here. This thing actually has a generator. So if you run out of power, you got plenty right there. It's got a propane detector right here. This is the inverter switch. So when you turn this on, all these plugs that say inverter are gonna turn on. And then there's another little suspicious red button here. It doesn't have any text on it. So. Ooh, so that <laughs> means you can push it, right? I'm not gonna push it. That's the self-destruct button, <laughs> for sure. One of the main reasons we rented this truck camper over other ones is that it is completely connected to the back. So you don't have to get out once you get to where you're going, which is really nice because it's really snowy out there and it cuts down on the amount of snow you get back here. It's the extended cab version of the Ford. But as you can see, there are no seats here. So instead we've just piled all of our belongings up here. I actually prefer it like this because it means we have extra storage space and we can put things up here and hide them so that the back stays nice and clean. Y'all, there is one person in this parking lot who is camping in a tent, the tiniest little tent. I can't believe he survived the night. <laughs> We thought it was a joke when we pulled up last yeah. night, but then somebody got out of it. I mean, it was cold enough in here. How did he make it? I don't know, man. Props to that guy, though. If you can believe it, I haven't driven this at all. Eric drove the entire way here, but I think that means it's time for me to take it for a spin. Woohoo! So this truck is four wheel drive, and just like our pickup truck, all you do is you pull this little lever back, puts it into four wheel drive, but you have to go outside. It has manual hubs, so you have to go manually turn it in order to lock it in place. Yeah, on each wheel you have to do that. On each wheel outside. It's kind of surprising to us because our pickup truck is a 97 and it all happens automatically. You don't have to get out and do anything. I think maybe some off-road enthusiasts prefer the manual ones, I don't know, but I we're not off-road enthusiasts. So. No. All right, let's hit the gas. Take the sucker for a spin. Woohoo! Woo Off to a good start. First thing you notice is how quiet this is. Oh my gosh, you could barely even hear that it's on. Yeah, compared to our truck, oh my, man. But it's. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, I forgot our camera's on the counter. Oh no. Oh, camera down. We dropped our camera. Oh, shoot. oh man, idiots. You think we would know to batten everything down before we start driving by now? We are actually in an overflow parking lot that's right next to the X Games. And the way it works is everyone just comes here, they camp out, they have their vans, they have their RVs, all kinds of really awesome four by four vehicles. It's actually one of the only spots, maybe the only spot in Aspen where you are allowed to do a 24 hour stay. Most other places, the lots kick you out at night. So not only do we get a park for the X Games, but we get to sleep here too, it's sweet. Yeah. 
speaking of, we are heading to the X Games right now, baby. <laughs> Skis to get around. Why am I using my feet? Stupid. <laughs> you guys, they let me enter into the X Games. I can't believe this is actually a competition, but here we go. Yeah, I'm pretty hardcore these days. Woo! That hurt my butt something fierce though. <laughs> and I did think I was gonna die at one point, but well, that was fun. <laughs> This seat is definitely meant for a child. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we got some special tickets to give us access to this private viewing area. This door dropping in. It's freaking sick. Incredible views all around. You can see the crowd way down the there. Backpack. You got like front row seats all the snowboarders here. This time. Look it up on each side. There is the left at 80. Right into the right. Well, snowboarding's cool and all. This is where the real X Games are happening. What's wrong? You can't handle the mountain? Uh, I'm watching the real athletes over here instead of the dum dums fall down a mountain. Where does he go from eight to four? Simon Whew. Holy cow, y'all. That was one of the coolest things ever. Cooler than I ever thought it would be. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. It's one thing to watch these people on video or from far away, but to see them up close, like we were getting hit by like the snow blowing off of their, their skis and stuff. It was crazy. It was pretty wild. But man, I've also never been so cold in my entire life. I mean, we were all bundled up, but my feet were completely numb. My hands were numb. My nose was numb. Sadly, I think we left our uh, propane heater on, so. We did. We yeah. realized that when we were already there and didn't want to come back. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we'll die tonight because of that, but at least at the moment, it is very nice and toasty in here. I think we'll be all right, <laughs> probably. Yo, we woke up to a fresh layer of snow and not a single other person left in the parking lot. Maybe a couple, but. <laughs> just a few, but uh. Yeah, it really cleared out after last night. I'm impressed. But it's cool. It feels like we have the whole thing to ourselves. This has actually been one of our favorite campsites ever. I mean, I know it's just a parking lot, but look at the views all around us. The X Games were a lot of fun, very chilly, but there is so much more of Colorado to see. We have the whole Southwest ahead of us. So we got to get on the road and start seeing things on the road. What are you doing? I don't know. I never know how to end it. Is this the end of the video? Yeah. Okay, goodbye, Ventures. We'll see you on the road.